Morning, everybody. Josh RV Nerd here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. A little chilly morning today, actually. Behind us here, 3,155 pounds. Little Salem Cruise Light, about a 19-foot bunkhouse coming in on trade. Um, I think it would be a great little camper for like a starter or if you're trying to get rid of a pop-up, get away from a pop-up may be a nicer way to phrase that. The uh, My wife will tell you, words, not my strong suit, but I do try to fix it by continuing to speak. <laughs> um, more to the point, uh, whether it's going to be your first time you're getting uh, away from a, a pop-up or a hybrid, you just want something fully enclosed and hard-sided, or you have a limited tow capacity, like this could fit into uh, like a, a pretty decent tow package SUV capacity pretty nicely and easily. Overall, it looks all right. It does have one glitch up in the front bedroom area that I'm going to show you right away so that you know you can buy with confidence from Halo RV because if we see something, we say something. We do not lie. We do not hide defects from our clients. We want you to buy with confidence from our family-owned and operated facility. And I want to get a bit of housekeeping out of the way right away. When I was walking through the RV, I detected where it had an obvious sign of a historical leak. I don't see where this is leaking currently. It most certainly has had a leak at some point. And you can see it up here in this little uh, front cabinet. The uh, You can see how the wallpaper there is a little wavy. You can see how it does stop, though, like it doesn't go all the way down past the cabinet line or anything like that. So what happened here is the front termination strip, where the roof meets the front wall, there's a big long seal all the way across the trailer called a termination strip. And it looks like, unfortunately, the maintenance on that had slipped. Now, when we get outside, I'll, I'll mention this again, the whole like roof of the RV, basically, they put like a, uh, a coating on it so that that wasn't going to happen again. Unfortunately, it did happen once. So if that's a deal breaker for you, if that spooks you a little too much, remember, we went out of our way to show you. We totally get it. We respect that feeling and that view. Or you're saying, well, I tell you what, as long as it's not leaking now and there's no other major issues, uh, if the money's right, I might still be interested. Well, then stay tuned with us. And if you appreciate the transparency and the decency and the honesty, hit that subscribe button and follow along and, and know that you'll always get fair facts and, and, and you know, decent deals here at Halet RV. And I don't really see anything else on the camper that is, is any point of major concern for me. Anytime you're looking at a used car, a used camper, I think it is reasonable to expect a couple surface blemishes. And if I see anything significant, I'll point it out. But I don't see anything else major here that I felt I needed to worry about. One of the other signature calling cards of this camper, because it is uh, a little heavier than something like a J-Flight SLX that we'd have here at Halet RV, is that this is 8 foot wide. It's not 7 foot wide, which means you have a full 4 person dinette. You'll see when we get up to the, uh, when we spin around, like basically I'm standing in a nice little sort of like dressing corner cubby where you could, uh, you know, use it as like a shoe garage if needed. Um, but it's a simple series camper, but it gets the job done. Like for just going around for a weekend, you want to spend most of your time outside. You just want to sleep and eat in here. That's all this is for. Side mount air conditioner, conditioner, <laughs> side mount air conditioner. <laughs> oh my Lord. That's, uh, not my best work. Side mount air conditioner <laughs> that you see right there. It keeps the overall height of the RV down. The dinette can fold down into a sleeper, so if you do need to like sleep five, you got an extra spot for it there. The whole camper is carpetless, which means it will be easy cleaning. Over here in the corner, just a pair of single bunks, and we actually find a lot of people, um, like even singles and couples, will purchase a model like this because it gives them uh, extra storage space that is very hard to come by in a little trailer. I do like that big giant mirror here. I think the previous owner slapped that on there, and it really does make the whole RV look and feel larger. Now, if you're looking, you might notice how over here in the kitchen, it doesn't have like a stove top vent, but if you look up top here, you see how we have a ceiling vent. That is to let that heat escape out of there. And I do want to take a pass through um, all of the storage. Where do I want to start that at? Let's actually start it over here in the kitchen. Real quick note though, you can see how the previous owner added their own entertainment setup. They added a TV here. It's actually mounted on the side of the cabinet. So it's on a pivoting swing arm and it's articulating so it can face down toward the dinette or the bed, which is cool because you can use it in multiple areas of the RV, even though it's all kind of one thing. They added their own DVD player down here. So they have kind of built their own entertainment package with this camper. And I like how they added a little bit of conduit down here so that, you know, you the, the power cables aren't strung everywhere. Now, as soon as I say that, of course, you see a little bit of a power strip hanging out. That's because that is able to be used as, like, kitchen power as well. Now, recommendation, don't put really high voltage appliances like a coffee maker or something hooked up to that thing. 
Um, high voltage appliances should always be plugged into an outlet directly. I do like this little kind of side stand right by the door when you come in though. Any little nook and cranny of storage I can get, I appreciate. And being a little bit wider camper, they had more chances for stuff like that. That is a gas and electric fridge, by the way. So if you are going to go off-grid a little bit, you can kick it over to propane mode. I like It only has one drawer, but it's a small camper. I think that any drawer is better than no drawer. I do like the compartmentalizing of it, though, so that you have a nice little spot there for um, you know fork, spoons, knives. Just kind of giving you a nice little pass around here. That's your furnace down below that, by the way. Dedicated pantry space here, though. Like, in today's market, you're finding a lot of uh, small, single-axle campers like this have started incorporating things like a uh, much larger refrigerator, which is cool, don't get me wrong. That also means, though, that they've lost a lot of pantry storage because there's only so much space to go around. Now, we've really already kind of looked up here above the bed, but we were looking at it for a different purpose, so I just want to kind of pass by it one more time. And I tell you, the, it's crazy to me, too. The uh, If you look at today's market, like Salem and Wildwood, by the way, like we carry Wildwood here at Halid RV. We are walking through a Salem right now. They're the exact same camper. And the advances they have made, the improvements they've made in these single axle little campers since this was built, it is absolutely insane. Like there's absolutely no comparing a camper like this to a current Wildwood FSX. But at the same time, you are going to save a lot of money here by comparison. From there back to the bathroom, it is kind of a, you know, simple but effective. There is absolutely nothing more than really 100% had to be here. Decent legroom. I mean, if you look, you got decent legroom in front of that toilet. I'm a big guy. I could fit on there. Where it will be a little trickier for me, and that is not shower surround paneling, by the way. That's just white wall paneling. So when you're done taking a shower, take your towel, wipe down the wall. It's not a big deal. This is a six and a half foot tall camper. It has a step up bathroom, like travel trailers are required to for plumbing code in, in RVs. That means that I at 6'3 will not stand without my head cricked a little bit in the shower. But again, I'm in a little camper. I'm willing to make accommodations. I'm willing to make concessions to stay lighter, to stay less expensive. And I spend a couple minutes in the shower. I spend all the rest of the 23 hours and 50 plus minutes out here. I'm okay with that. Now, are you okay with that? Because it's your money buying the trailer, not mine. That's your decision to make. And kind of like the little... Uh, previous leak spot in front of the uh, above the bed there. Even if it's not perfectly complimentary, we will always go out of our way to earn your business and your trust here at Halid RV. Sometimes you need to know what's not awesome on a camper too. And it is the gray season here at Halid RV. The sky is gray, everything feels gray, but what is black and white? We got a little camper in front of us, we got to learn a little bit more about so it's simple. It's a it's a simple, effective series of camper. And one of the things I want to uh, point out to you is that looks like a power awning on it. It is not. It is actual a manual awning. The thing is, when you hear that, when you hear manual awning, your brain immediately goes to those old classic awnings that had these bars you had to lift, and then there was cranks, and like it, it was just they were a little more complicated. This thing is about as simple and easy as it gets, but it takes two hands to demonstrate it. So I've recruited some help. All right, so I've recruited our old buddy, Mr. Adventure Aaron here. You may recognize him from some previous videos. Aaron, go ahead, let her rip. Let's see how quick and easy that thing rolls right out there. Here we go. Now, what's kind of cool about these guys is that it's going to basically operate a lot like a power awning. It still has the easy adjust arms, but you see that you can actually roll it in or out much, much faster. And then when you're done, you just kind of put that hook <laughs> <laughs> Look at him hamming it up. Thank you, Aaron. Guys, if you appreciate Mr. Aaron's extra efforts today, give him a call. If you're interested in this trailer, make sure you ask for Aaron by name. We'd be happy to, uh, you know, <laughs> he'd be happy to help get you camping. Of course, he leaves me to put the awning away. But th again, the good news is it's, it takes about 10 seconds. It's simple and easy. Now up front, we got a little bit of uh, chicken pock, bock, bock kind of uh, dents on the front here. This is from Little Stones getting flung. But uh, if you note the location of these, that's why most newer trailers, the diamond plate is always down here. They don't really need to extend the diamond plate up because like 99% of anything flung from your tires is going to hit down here in this part. Now, it, it's not awesome that they're there, but again, it's not really hurting anything. Now, real quick uh, housekeeping note. You notice how there is no propane tank on the camper currently. Uh, the uh, previous owner of the RV had, uh, you know, they basically hadn't been using the RV actively recently. They had the propane tank removed and stored. My understanding is in the next couple days they're going to work on getting that brought over to us. They just didn't think about it. Hooked the trailer up this morning. They're all excited to get their new camper here at Halet RV and it just kind of slipped their mind. So 
you know, you need a propane tank to make the trailer work. There will be a propane tank on it when you come uh, take the RV home. Now, one of the cool things here is you've got yourself pretty decent outside storage compartment. It does not fully pass through because remember, you've got that corner little dressing space and shoe garage. But under that entire Camp Queen, you've got all this handy storage space here. Now, this is not an enclosed heated belly model. It's not an Arctic camper. It's a simple spring, summer, fall, run around, have a good time kind of trailer. Tire looks fine. Uh, the uh, bumper on the back here, if you chose to add some, I tell you what, um, I, I would, if it were me, I would plan on adding a spare tire to it. Uh, this was built with price first in mind. And the dealer that apparently initially ordered it, ordered it with no spare tire, which is something you wouldn't find us doing here at Halid RV. I'm going to put, if spare tires ever optional on a new RV here, we're going to put it on every single time because we want to make sure that, God forbid, your family does suffer a flat tire, you're protected. I, I don't know. I guess this dealer didn't have the same concern for their customer, but neither here nor there. The roof is fully walkable. I've actually grabbed light. Actually, you can see a little bit of it here. When they had that one little blip up front, they kind of went through and did some coating up top. You can see that little kind of white splash over spot right there. The uh, bumper is also big enough if you want to use it as a sewer hose holder, you could do that. Um, I actually kind of like the way the previous owners, like when they had their little trips and they had a good time, you know, a lot of people will get the stickers to kind of commemorate where they've been. I do like, though, that they put them on the bumper instead of the paint of the RV because if you want to get really aggressive with something like a power washer, uh, you can, you know, tend to blow them off of that bumper without worrying about, you know, damaging anything. Where sometimes if you're going to get really aggressive with a power washer like that on the metal skin of a trailer, it just doesn't always end up well. So you won't have that issue here. So thank you for tuning in today. If you have any questions, give us a call. Leave us some comments too. What did you love? What did you dislike? What would you like to see different? What can we do better for you? We always appreciate hearing from our audience. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy hail at camping, everyone.